This lecture is called Photonic Soul. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Genesis 1, 4-4 four four is significant. It is, after all, the beginning of the universe, and that is light. This is the Gajev food octave, which shows how food is processed within a human being, and it is described in previous lectures. But the important point is the change that I have now introduced, and that is in position six, where I have said that photons of light have replaced the now tired concept of impressions that Gajev Spensky followers say are necessary to take in to build higher being bodies. After all, impressions are mostly illuminated by photons of light, and thus without light, there would be no impressions. Even a blind person could feel the effect of the photons, because the spectrum of light includes infrared and microwaves, and can affect all sensory systems. This gives a real substance that relates in the same way that air begins the growth of the spirit octave, at three, and thus photons begin the soul octave. So at six, there are senses and photonic light. In the theory of Miles Mathis, a contemporary self-taught genius, contrary to the consensus quantum mechanics view, photons are not just energy particles, but actual spheres traveling at the speed of light, C and spinning at 1 over C. These spheres are quantized in multiples of 1, 2, 4, and 8. Spinning on their axes, or also spinning on the x-axis, or also on the y-axis, and also the z-axis. Being so small, they mostly hit on edge, which causes them to acquire or lose multiple spins. Sometimes a photon can grow to two times its size as an ultraviolet photon with a stacked X spin, or four times the size with a stacked Y spin as an electron, or eight times the size with a stacked Z spin as a proton or a neutron. Thus the photon is the basic building block of the universe, since all particles can be built from a photon and a photon is light. Here I show what I call the photonic octave. And you'll see it begins as a photon, goes through all the different stages, ultraviolet, photon, electron, proton, neutron, and then the elements, and then the compounds. And the outer force on this process is gravity, and the inner force is the charge field. Before embarking on a discussion of spirit and soul, it is necessary to define the terms. I am using the definitions of Gajev, whereby spirit is partially present in a human being, but soul is not. Contrary to consensus belief, Gurdjieff claims that you are not born with a soul at birth, and neither is it present from reincarnation because that is of the spirit, not the soul. A soul must be built in your lifetime. As Gurdjieff explains, it requires the taking in of the sorrow of the cosmic creator, and thus in this world where riches are the motivators, it is really sought after until the reality of one's death is realized too late. In his major book, Beelzebub's Tales to His Grandson, chapter 21, page 
247. He says, Blessed are those that have a soul. Blessed are those that have none. But grief and sorrow are to those that have it in its conception. In all three brain beings of the whole of our universe, without exception, among whom are also we humans, owing to the data crystallized in our common presences for engendering in us the divine impulse of conscience, the whole of us and the whole of our essence are and must be already in our foundation only suffering. In consequence of this, every three-centered being, he says, in our great universe, and also we humans existing on the earth, must owing to the presence in us also of the factors for engendering the divine impulse of objective conscience, always inevitably struggle with the arising and the proceeding within our common presences of two quite opposite functionings giving results already sensed by us either as desires or non-desires. And so only a person who consciously assists the process of this inner struggle and consciously assists the non-desires to predominate over the desires behaves in just accordance with the essence of our common creator whereas a person who with his consciousness assists the contrary only increases the creator's sorrow. And this is in Beelzebub's Tales, chapter 21, pages 273 and 274, the first visit of Beelzebub to India. Spirit has as its root meaning and is actually breath. Sadly, it is often incorrectly extended into the word anima, being the force of life that overshadows the true meaning of soul. This leads people to believe they are born with a ready-made soul. It would be more correct to say that we possess a ready-made spirit, or at least the beginnings of a spirit. In Kirlian photography, the aura can be seen and this lends credibility to the spirit being made of electromagnetic energy and consists of a higher frequency than the visual range. As long as you can breathe, you have a spirit. But is this spirit fully grown with its gravity center in the heart? In the resurrection story, Jesus appears in spirit and in this state showed Peter the meaning of agape love in John 21, 15, 17. Agape love is love that does not look for return. The true measure of spirit is conscience, which is based on the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. All true religions and societies that follow this rule understand the importance of the growth of spirit, which reflects our true nature to live in harmony and the possibility of eternal life. The Christian martyrs believed that their spirits would survive death, but the length of survival is dependent upon its growth. Only the soul that is built from thought and photons with its gravity center in the brain is eternal. It is easier to imagine that a spirit can survive after death because many have seen a ghost or at least have felt some energy presence at certain times. The celebration of Halloween has immunized us somewhat from the shiver down our spine on encountering a ghost or a spirit. Of course, there is a difference between a ghost and a spirit because a ghost is imprinted on a particular location due to some experienced trauma whereas a spirit can wander freely within the confines of the earth's atmosphere, yet can be summoned from afar by a deep emotional connection. The whole concept of communion in the Christian faith is based on communicating with Jesus' spirit by using a blood-to-wine connection. Others have used seances or Ouija boards to communicate with spirits. Sometimes just the memory of someone you love who has passed away can trigger 
an emotional connection that feels as if that loved one is present. This shows our willingness to believe in the existence of a spirit. Unfortunately, the emotional state that is required to sustain a connection with a departed spirit is not sustainable and inevitably leads to doubt. A spirit can exist for some time after death, but only in the atmosphere of the earth as it was born from air. A soul can exist forever because it is built from photons of light. To understand the difference between spirit and soul, it is important. If one compared the methods of Jesus and Buddha, one would say that Jesus emphasized the heart and Buddha the mind. This is the same distinction between the angels being of the heart and the archangels of the mind. You could be the most caring person in the world and possess a fully grown spirit, but if you lack understanding, you will never possess a soul. Gajev would say, that even if you knew all the knowledge of the universe, you could not grow a soul, because a soul requires the understanding of his, her endlessness. In this essay, it will be shown that different organs of the body relate to spirit and others to soul, and thus absorb different foods, so clearly the methods of obtaining a spirit or a soul are different. It is necessary to review some of the concepts that I covered in previous lectures. Each of the three bodies that can be possessed by a human being are made up of an octave, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, to the higher do. This was shown in the food octave that we started out with. The musical octave is explained in P. D. Uspensky's In Search of the Miraculous. And in this section, in figure 9 and figure 10, he talks about trying to show the vibration points of the octave. The differences in the acceleration or increase in the notes or the difference in tone are shown between me and re, re and me, me and fa, fa and soul, soul and la, la and si, which is also t, in the modern musical theory. And then, finally, between si and do. But there are two places between me and fa where the increase is retarded, and between si and do where the increase is retarded also. And then importantly, it discusses the fact that if you map these places where the increase is retarded, you have this first diagram that shows the X's where the increase is retarded. But really thinking about the triangle within the Enneagram, it is better to say that the two points of discontinuity are mapped as shown here. So here is a picture of the engine that governs these seven notes by a central triangle in the Enneagram. You see the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, and then the higher Do. And there are three places that are shown as discontinuities of the cosmic octave. The one on the right is the mechano consigning middle in, which I call AA, meaning automatically activated. And the other point is the intentionally actualized middle in, which I am calling IA, intentionally activated. And then the other point is the DO and the higher DO, which I am calling the incepting, converging, AO stands for Alpha and Omega, as shown in Revelations. This was covered in previous lectures. But importantly, I have discussed further the higher octave Do. So first of all, the position Mi Far is called the automatic activator, AA, because the organism passes through that discontinuity 
by means of itself. For example, do re mi of the body octave passes to fa by means of air from the outside taken in by the lungs. The position so la is called the intentional activator, ia, as it needs to pass through this with intention. For example, the fa soul of the body passes through la by means of consciousness. The higher do is the completed do, an octave higher, and this is the one that I have featured. Its action is best described by the Christian symbol from the book of Revelations, Alpha or Omega, with the connotation of the first shall be last and the last shall be first. This is also similar to the Aurora Boris, the snake that bites its tail, the completion of the octave do re mi fa so la to the higher do has a greater function than the mere completion of the discontinuity between t and the higher do this higher do being now on the level of the next higher octave is like a converging point as in mathematics consequently the discontinuity between t and the higher do should be considered as part of the higher doe. And so these three discontinuities are governed by the inner triangle in the Enneagram, which is the law of three acting in the law of seven. The passive side is doe, the active side is fa, and the neutralizing side is so la. Now in a previous lecture, I assigned organs to each vibration of the body, spirit, and soul octave. Using the locations from the Uspensky diagram, which is shown here, of the head, middle, and lower body, I assigned the missing la of the body octave to the endocrine system and proposed six organs, ray to T of the spirit octave and seven organs of the soul octave. These are only expressed as hydrogens with a number assigned from lower to higher. Lower is a larger number and higher is a smaller number. These were described in In Search of the Miraculous, Chapter 9, Figure 39. I have called the soul as purple and the spirit as green and the body as pink. And you will see there are three levels shown. Body is the lower level, spirit is the chest, and soul is the head. And I've also put in averages, which will be used for everything living, which is another diagram I will be showing of man, angel, and archangel. In the previous lecture called Three Body Enneagram, I showed how I assigned these organs to extend this diagram from P. D. Spensky's book. But a brief synopsis of that is shown next. For the body, the missing stop and the law of the food octave of Gurdjieff's Beelzebub's Tales Holy Planet Purgatory was added by me and assigned to the endocrine system using law 24 of the body octave. And the title of that lecture is called the key to the soul is within the missing stop in the, in the food octave. Now for the spirit octave, I looked at traditional Chinese medicine as a guide. In the Su Wen, the book of plain questions, a dialogue between the yellow emperor and his medical advisors. It says that there are five yin organs that produce five kinds of qi. Joy is from the heart, anger is from the liver, pensiveness is from the spleen, anxiety is from the lungs, and fear is from the kidneys, adrenal gland. It is for this reason that I assigned four organs for the spirit octave, which relates to emotion, leaving out the liver, which was already part of the Gachev body position, me. The lungs are clearly the dough of the spirit octave, and the heart, the fourth chakra, called the heart chakra, would be the ray of the spirit octave. 
The thymus at position me of the spirit octave is basically viewed by medical science as a discarded organ, useful in youth and atrophied in old age. Sounds like a metaphor. However, like the derivation of the name of the Greek word thymus, it is a source of courage and passion. Plato has it as the center of one's being, mediating between the reason of the brain and carnal desires. It is an active player in the early immune system and is the location of the gorilla-like thump on the chest. One can view it as a catcher's mitt of the heart. This would be the fifth chakra, as the throat chakra. Next, referring to the dialogue of the yellow emperor organs, we have the spleen and the kidneys that relate to the spirit octave. When we observe that Uspensky's hydrogen diagram of the spirit, the line goes down to the body at position fa and soul. These align perfectly as the spleen at fa and kidneys at soul. For the last position, T, I have assigned the famous pineal or pineal gland, shaped like a pine cone, shown in the pine cone statue at the Vatican, and is often called the door of consciousness. It is also referred to as the third eye, as the sixth chakra, called the seat of the soul, although clearly the seat of the spirit is more correct. Thus it is better as the seventh chakra, known as the crown chakra. Many agree with this. Its action is like the Vesca Pisces, which is created by two spheres with the same radius, which intersect each other's circumference. For the second to last position, La is the hypothalamus, which is similar importance to the pineal gland. Its main role is to keep the body in homeostasis as much as possible, thus maintaining a healthful, balanced body state. The hypothalamus acts as the connection between the endocrine and the nervous systems to achieve this. It plays its part in many essential functions of the body, such as body temperature, thirst, appetite, and weight control, emotions, sleep cycles, sex drive, childbirth, blood pressure, and heart rate, production of digestive juices, balancing body fluids. As different systems and parts of the body send signals to the brain, they alert the hypothalamus to any unbalanced factors that need addressing, and it responds by releasing the right hormones into the bloodstream to balance the body. Most importantly, it maintains an internal temperature of 98.6 Fahrenheit. Thus, if it is too high, it tells the body to sweat. If it is too cold, then it creates internal heat by shivering. It fits better as the sixth chakra, the third eye chakra. The pituitary gland, which is often attributed to the throat chakra, is attached to the hypothalamus, but the pituitary gland relates more to the endocrine system. So in this diagram, I highlighted these centers in yellow. As to the soul octave, it is clear that all of these vibration locations must be in the brain. I decided to use the five senses, touch, taste, smell, hearing, and seeing as the note do of the soul octave. And here I did an enneagram of five senses and added two other senses, the vestibular system and the proprioception system, are also acknowledged to be real senses by Wikipedia as follows. The vestibular system adjusts balance and attention. This system accounts for the perception of our body in relation to gravity, movement, and balance. It provides information related to movement and head position. It is important for the development of balance, coordination, eye control, attention, being secure with movement and some aspects of language and development. It measures acceleration, g-force, body movements, and head positions. Knowing that you are moving when you are in an elevator. Knowing whether you are lying down or sitting up and being able to walk along a balance beam. This sixth sense is what I have assigned to the soul octave at Ray. And if you look at the corresponding 
gray in the initial Spensky diagram, you'll see that it's located in the chest. And this is probably due to the concept that balance is at the center of the chest in one's being. It supports my choice of separating this sixth sense to be actually a stopender, which I have assigned at Ray. The proprioception system maintains the ability of spatial prediction, intuition, and awareness of self. It is a sensing of the relative position of neighboring parts of the body and strength of effort being employed in movement. It was developed by the nervous system as a means to keep track of and control of the different parts of the body. A normal person can move a finger knowing where and what the finger is doing. With little effort, the normal person can just put his or her finger to his or her nose easily. Without it, the brain cannot feel what the finger is doing, and the process must be carried out in more conscious and calculated steps, using vision to compensate for the lost feedback on the movement of the finger. Thus, it is used in sobriety tests by the police, and I have assigned this to me of the soul octave. And interestingly, the corresponding me in the initial Uspensky diagram was located in the lower body level, which was probably due to the concept that the awareness of self comes from the ground up. It supports my choice of separating it as an actual stopender. In terms of these two senses, the sixth and the seventh sense, it is interesting to observe the often parroted necessity of attention, impartiality, and awareness of self in the Gajev work, and to see its similarity to these senses. Perhaps our bodily senses have been in the work all along. Just the act of taking off our glasses and getting out of bed after reading some new eights book, or this essay by a Gajevian idiot like me, has used both of these senses. In the humor of Gajev, I call it the VP method of becoming a man, woman in capitals. Wink. Given the importance of these two senses in the Gajev system, I have made them part of the soul octave. These senses are part of the body, but the vibration centers of the soul from fa to t are not. These last vibrations are assigned to the four lobes of the brain, but they are just vague concepts that transcend the measured functions of the brain. They must exist beyond death, of the brain to complete the soul. The parietal lobe processes integrate sensual information about temperature, taste, touch, recognizes faces, and reads words. The occipital lobe is primarily responsible for vision, turning what the eyes see into meaningful information. The temporal lobe is responsible for memory, speech, learning, and sense of smell. The right temporal lobe manages recognition of faces and other visual objects. The left temporal helps with the remembering and understanding language, which is part of verbal memory. The frontal lobe is important for cognitive functions and control of voluntary movement or activity. Having associated the three octaves of body, spirit, and soul with an organ of the body, it is possible to create a three-body Enneagram in the previous lecture. Here is the completed octaves of body, spirit, and soul, and the soul's completion as part of the Holy Sun Absolute and the Megalocosmos. Another way of looking at this is in a four-realm spreadsheet. The figure below shows the organ's relationship to the major arcana of the tarot, which is also made up of seven times three cards. In a previous lecture, I showed the placing of the major arcana cards of the tarot on the Kabbalah, and what I have done here is show their relationship to these different organs that I have assigned. So the body, which is in realm four, is made up of the stomach, the duodenum, the liver, and then there's the automatic activation of air in the lungs, the cerebellum, the cerebrum, 
the intentional activation of photons of light, which is consciousness, in the endocrine system and the sexual system. The spirit, realm five, enters in with air from the lungs, and then the heart, and then the thymus, and the automatic activation is agape love, and then fa, which is the spleen, and soul, which are the kidneys and adrenal glands. And then at this point, there's the completed body dough, which I have associated with Gurdjieff's reason to Nunald. And then there's the hypothalamus and the pineal gland, La and T. And now in soul, the dough enters in at the point which was the internal activation, photons of light in the body. And it is the five senses. Then there's the vestibular system, proprioception. And then there's the automatic activation point, of contemplation, meditation, which is similar to Gajev's holy planet purgatory. The paratal lobe, the occipital lobe, the completed spirit, podkolad, the temporal lobe and the frontal lobe. From the above chart, showing the vibration points of the spirit octave, it can be seen why it is difficult to maintain the connection with the spirit world, because the last two vibration points of the spirit, shown in blue, are beyond that body octave. These are La, Hypothalamus, and T, Pineal Gland. This also implies that if a person dies before completing these last two vibration points, then this person may temporarily have its spirit sustained by a loved one, who, having completed the spirit octave on earth, can project these last two energies to them. Thus the importance of the hypothalamus, whose main role is to keep the body in homostasis, otherwise death results, and the pineal gland, which is often referred to as the third eye. The feeding of another spirit body after death through the hypothalamus and pineal gland can have a detrimental effect on that spirit as it may trap that spirit from moving on, as they say. This is the usual advice to stop thinking of the departed spirit so it can move on. The advice is worthwhile if the soul is attached to the spirit in order to help the soul to reject emotional attachment and to ascend to higher realms. However, it is not much value if the spirit does not have a soul, then to move on is towards disillusion. Many a soul of a famous person has become trapped in the atmosphere of the earth, being unable to ascend to the higher realm of soul, because the admiring person continues to project their energies into their spirit. When Peter declared his love for Jesus in John 21, Jesus replied that agape love was superior. By his filial love, Peter would trap Jesus in his spirit and prevent him from ascending. Perhaps fame is not worth that much after all. Between the years 1925 to 1927, Niels Bohr, Werner von Heisenberg, and Erwin Schrodinger created the so-called Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics that abandoned the rigor of Newtonian physics by declaring that the quantum realm is unknowable. This created the theoretical fields of quantum electrodynamics, QED, and quantum chromodynamics, QCD, that are still believed today and supported with complex mind-boggling mathematical constructs. Miles Mathis has blown it all apart with simple algebra, but tenured professors dare not accept this work for fear of losing their salaries and grants. The word quantum means a discrete state that is not a decimal number, that was first discovered and imagined as orbits of electrons around the nucleus, but it has since become a word for the whole subatomic realm. Quantum has become the imaginary play world of nuclear physicists and mathematicians. They have imagined mystical particles that have color, flavor, and spin, 
with names such as Charm and Strange and Quark, from James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake, or God Particle, Higgs Boson, that makes mass out of nothing. This God Particle cost $13.25 billion to find by using the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, if it really was found. It has also led to the belief in multiple dimensions, such as string theory. Starting with the three mistakes of Niels Bohr, quantum physics still insists that a photon can only be a point particle with no mass that sometimes behaves as a particle and sometimes as a wave. Their experiments have created the concept of superposition, which Schrodinger represented by the analogy of a cat in a state where it is alive or dead at the same time until one looks inside. The experiments also claim that particles can be intimately connected across each end of the universe, which Einstein referred to as spooky action from a distance. The silliest concept of all is that the location of electron around the nucleus is just a probability. This has contributed to the expression of Alice going down the rabbit hole, which has come to define our modern science. Miles Mathis' theory has resolved all these strange occurrences by postulating a photon as a real spherical particle with four independent spins. The quantum nature of the photon is explained by spin rules. On its axis, which is one time, the x plane end over end, which is two times, the y plane, which is four times, and the z plane, which is eight times. It accounts for the apparent wave nature of the photon when it travels. Sound exists because it creates crests and troughs of air that carry it outward as water travels in the waves of the ocean. Our ear vibrates from these waves, and the brain interprets this as sound. Sound cannot exist in the vacuum of outer space. Since it was believed that light was a wave, it was postulated that light was transmitted in the ether, which permeated all space. This is why the soul has been referred to as the etheric body, because it was thought to exist in the ether. However, when it was shown in the famous eclipse experiment of Eddington in 1919 that light bends around our sun, which affirmed Einstein's theory of general relativity, it was clear that the photons of light had their own internal energy and did not need ether. Thus, the soul could not be, strictly speaking, an etheric body. The photon's internal energy propels it through the vacuum of space at a constant velocity c. It would therefore be more precise to call the soul a photonic body. The spirit is created like notes in a musical composition that need air to be expressed, but the soul is created from the levels of photonic energy that create galaxies, stars, planets, and organic life that follow the laws of a cosmic architect. This explains why spirit can only exist in the atmosphere of the earth, whereas a soul can exist anywhere in the universe. Matter is nothing more than spun-up photons that have taken certain permanent patterns and forms. These photons are similar to the hydrogens in In Search of the Miraculous. In formations like the earth, it is the spin that creates a low pressure at the poles that draws the photons in and then are ejected at the equator. It is the recycling charge of the sun and the galaxies that provides the photons to build the soul. These infinitesimal spinning photon particles will not stop like a regular top due to the friction of air because there is no friction in quantum space and they can spin forever. Some may collide with each other and acquire mass, and others lose mass, yet their speed remains the speed of light. The recycling is what acts as a feedback loop that connects everything. 
Did you ever wonder how chameleons can change color to match the color they are sitting on? Or stick bugs begin looking like sticks? Or how caterpillars can turn to butterflies? It's all within the feedback loop of photon charge, within the atoms of the cells that triggers the enzymes to rewrite the RNA. This is how sensory perception happens on a subatomic level. Clearly brain cells, which are the building blocks of the soul, are part of this feedback loop with the cosmos. Ancient science has a diagram of everything living, which was introduced by Gurdjieff to Uspensky, shown in In Search of the Miraculous by Uspensky. Chapter 10, Figure 58. It shows a circle to the left, which was the average of man, angels, and archangels. Then on the top right was a circle that represented what it was food for, and the bottom right was what its food was. In an earlier lecture, I explained my modification to this diagram because I objected to angels eating animals and thought that angels should be eating humans, given that angels were symbolic for the spirit, Kastjanian body. Once I adjusted this, I changed man's food to animals instead of invertebrates and locusts. Perhaps vegetarians made this change. This made food for and food to be just one away instead of two. I used this diagram to support my addition of the Anclad body, based on the absolute reason of his endlessness himself. This reason was introduced by Kurchev in Beelzebub's Tales in The Inevitable Result of Impartial Mentation, Chapter 47, page 1177. Returning to the three-body Enneagram shown previously, it must be remembered that the Enneagram shows the position of the seven notes of the octave from Do to T, but it is built with nine points. Thus there are two places where these notes are activated by two points of an inner triangle, which represents the action of the law of three inside of the law of seven. These two places I have labeled as plus active and neutral, and they are between me and fa and soul and la. Note that the labeling of the Enneagram starts at one, at re, leaving nine at the lower do, higher do, at the apex of the triangle, which I have labeled as passive. Shown are three engines of three, passive, active, and neutral, each beginning at a discontinuity, with the fourth position being its completion of that octave, being of the quality of the next octave, assisting in that octave. So you'll note in this triangle of spirit, soul, and body that each of the three octaves begins at a different point. The body octave begins at 9 or 0 and goes to 3, which is at AA, which is the automatic activation, and then to 6, which is the intentional activation, and then to AO, which is the incepting conversion point at 9. The spirit octave begins at 3, which is AO, the DO and goes to the automatic activation point at 6, and then to the intentional activation point, IA, up at 9, and then to AO, 3, at its completion. The soul begins at DO, AO, at point 6, and then to its automatic activation point, which is up at 9, and then to its intentional activation point at 3, and then ends at its AO point, which is the higher DO, at point 6. You can see this in the chart, and note that the blue squares indicate vibrations that are beyond the physical octave. 
than if we apply this engine to make three engines of body, spirit, and soul. We have the following diagram for the body, and for the spirit, and for the soul. The body has four positions, as shown, and the spirit has four positions, as shown, and the soul has four positions, as shown. Analyzing in greater detail the discontinuity of three, which is the body octave, between me and Fa, where air enters in and the spirit octave begins. So first of all, there's work on the body octave, mi fa, automatic activation. This continuity is well covered in Beelzebub's tales because we cannot live without air. Next is work on the spirit octave three, which is at do, and air creates oxygenated blood that begins the do of the spirit octave with the lungs, which feeds the heart at ray and the thymus at me. Analyzing in greater detail the important discontinuity at six, which is the body octave between soul and la, where photons enter in, where the body, spirit, and soul octaves interact. Ironically, the gajev Spensky fourth-way method claims it is superior because it incorporates all three methods Fakir, monk, and yogi, body, emotions, and mind simultaneously, without the need of a monastic existence. However, towards the goal of increasing consciousness, the majority of methods employed exclude the emotions and thought by concentrating on observation of the body at discontinuity six, while ignoring spirit and the soul. Yet the goal of sustained consciousness cannot ever be reached without working also on the spirit, emotions, and soul, mind. The achievement of a perfected body at the higher dough on the level of the spirit angels, always conscious, cannot be reached without working simultaneously on the body, spirit, and soul octaves. So work on the body octave six. Photons of light accepted into the cerebrum create consciousness, but since this discontinuity requires intentional activation, actual consciousness is rarely present. Having recognized this problem, the common practice of the fourth way schools is to emphasize work on the mind while traditionally working in the garden with the aim of increasing consciousness. Clearly, photons are always present to the senses, even in the rain, or at work, or in an office, or a sports game, or during meditation. Without sustained consciousness, the body relies on the intermittent activation of consciousness, which is just enough for the food octave to nourish the hormonal system, the endocrine system at La, and the sexual system at T. What is commonly believed to be consciousness is merely the playing of memory tapes stored in the brain or memorized habits from the cerebellum. The brief moments of real consciousness are sufficient to bridge the discontinuity between soul and law, but do little towards reaching the higher dough of the body octave, which is the perfected self, mind, emotions, body, and balance, which is then on the level of the spirit octave. The failure to complete the body octave to the higher dough, which is the alpha omega AO point of existence, will prevent the completion of a spirit and a soul. The method of intentional activation at soul law, as explained by Spensky and Kachev for anyone on a spiritual path, is to encourage more periods of consciousness by self observation. The student attempting to use the brute force of will to sustain consciousness and yet being unable to stop the inevitable drifting in and out of consciousness will no doubt feel frustration. Since these negative emotions are counterproductive, the student is advised to disallow emotions. Ironically, since the spirit octave is at its automatic activation point, AA, at the same discontinuity, so la, it is actually the emotions of spirit that can help to automatically sustain consciousness. 
So the next is work on the spirit octave at six, mi fa. This is the automatic activation point. It is the breath of life, the still small voice, accepted into the thymus and the heart, ray and me of the spirit octave. And behold, the Lord passed by, and great and strong wind rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. This is in First Kings 19. This is Elijah after his dramatic victory over the prophets of Baal. The automatic activation of the spirit occurs because love and conscience are innate. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. This is in Matthew 6. Jesus speaking. Alas, these natural emotions are often turned into narcissism and conceit. Thus Jesus emphasized the need for agape love above filial love in John 21. If your heart is open, the spirit octave should automatically progress through the spleen, earthquake, and adrenal glands, fire, far and soul of the spirit octave. These organs, when misused, contribute to hate, but when activated correctly, build a love more powerful than Aphrodite, the goddess of love herself. This energy, when intentionally activated by the completed body, sustains the hypothalamus and the pineal glands, la and t of the spirit octave. Since these two energies, hypothalamus and pineal glands, are beyond the physical plane, the spirit, they provide the foundation of the completed spirit that exists beyond the death of the body on the level of the soul octave. Often the student is advised to use impartiality as this is meant to prevent the feelings of anger, hate, self-importance, and so on, that are the opposite of consciousness. However, the misunderstanding of what impartiality entails can cause callousness in one's actions towards others and to oneself. One must understand that once the spirit is grown, consciousness naturally arises from the warmth in one's heart, so one should not shun emotion. As Jesus taught, the emotion that is proper to use here is a copy love rather than filial love. Early Christianity, having concentrated on the work of the spirit, quickly rose to the number one religion. Prior to this, the Jewish God and the Greek and Roman gods required obedience and meted out punishment for wrongdoing. In this environment, there would be little hope of obtaining a spirit. It must have been amazing for those disciples to have the first taste of spirit that opened their minds to consciousness. The third is work on the soul octave at six. This is its do position, the alpha omega. Photonic light becomes the do of the soul, like air became the dough of the spirit. The five senses take in the photons and progress forward into the vestibular system at ray, which adjusts balance and attention, then forward to proprioception at me, which manifests the ability of spatial prediction, intuition, and awareness of self. Both the vestibular system and the proprioception system are similar to being part of Judy that Kujev talked about. The soul will not be viable until it can pass its automatic activation, AA point, which requires the completed dough of the body octave and the perfected self, mind, emotions, body, and balance. The discontinuity six between soul and law is the beginning of the soul. As a grown-up with an infant soul, you must train your mind not to be ruled by the senses, but to consciously accept the energy of the photons to build an essence. Of help here is the consciousness of the body, an agape love of the spirit. Later, as Beelzebub explains to his grandson, 
in Beelzebub's tales. It will be necessary to train your soul, mind, to contemplate the purpose of your existence. So in the meantime, exist as you exist. Only do not forget one thing. Namely, at your age, it is indispensably necessary that every day at sunrise, while watching the reflection of its splendor, you bring about a contact between your consciousness and the various unconscious parts of your general presence. This is in Beelzebub's Tales, Chapter 7, page 78, Becoming Aware of Genuine Being Duty. Analyzing in greater detail the important discontinuity at nine, which in the body octave is the higher doe, which is on the level of the spirit octave, where the body, spirit, and soul octaves interact. The position nine is similar to the concept of Gajev's holy planet purgatory. The perfected body is in bliss seeking to sustain the spirit, but the soul is aware of the further journey to its completion. All the skies reflected, as it were, the radiance which recalls the radiance of the famous and incomparable turquoise. Its atmosphere is always pure like the phenomenal crystal. Everywhere there is every individual with his present senses, everything external, or as your favorites would say, blissfully, delightfully. Everywhere on the planet, corresponding gorges are convenient caves of all kinds of interior form, made partly by nature herself and partly artificially, with striking views from their entrances. And in these caves there is everything that can be required for a blissful and tranquil existence, with a complete absence of any essence, anxiety, whatever, in any part of the presence of any cosmic independent individual, such as higher being bodies, can also become. It is just in these caves that these Higher being bodies exist by their own choice, who, owing to their merits, come to this holy planet from the whole of the great universe for their great existence. This is in Beelzebub's Tales, Holy Planet Purgatory, page 746. So the body octave at nine is at its higher doe, the Alpha Omega. This is the completed octave of the body, the perfected body, of reason to Nunald with body, emotions, and mind balanced. It is in the realm of spirit, but still subject to death. Then there is the spirit octave at nine, sola. The spirit octave requires intentional activation, which is supplied by the perfected body, tenunald. It is at this place that insight and epiphany occur. The spirit, having its source from breath, can use sustained breath to activate the hypothalamus, and the pineal gland to complete the spirit octave. And then there is the soul octave at nine, mi fa. The soul is automatically activated, assisted by the perfected body, turnunald. Contemplation and meditation can assist in attracting the higher energy photons taken in by the senses rather than the low energy trivia. This will allow the soul to proceed to the parietal lobe at far to integrate sensory information and knowledge obtained by reading and then to proceed further to the occipital lobe at soul to turn what the eyes see into meaningful information. We're now at the discontinuity 12, which reduces to 3. Analyzing it in greater detail, the discontinuity, which is where the soul octave interacts an octave higher which is the body octave between me and fa. So the work on the higher octave, sol la, is intentional activation. This continuity is an octave higher and represents the final discontinuity that soul must pass before its completion. It requires intentional activation. It shows a perfect match to one of the final chapters in Beelzebub's Tales. And for the reason of understanding, these factors are as follows. The first is that the sacred affirming is the newly perceived impressions of any localization which has at the given moment what is called the center of gravity functioning. And this corresponds to the temporal lobe. The second or sacred denying is the corresponding data present in another of its locations, 
which I have shown as the frontal lobe. And the third factor is what is called the being autokalisnikos, the sense of what the name signifies, the results of the persevering accusation of the striving towards the manifestations of one's own individuality, which is the completed spirit, Padkolad. This is in Form and Sequence, Chapter 46, page 1168. So finally, there is the discontinuity at 15, which reduces to 6, which is the culmination of the soul octave at the higher dough, which is the anklet body. And the work on the anklet body, being at the discontinuity soul law, which is the intentional activation position of the body an octave higher together with other anklet bodies acts as the intentional activation as the active force with the holy sun absolute as the alpha omega as passive force and the megalocosmos as the automatic activation as the neutral force that is the universal triune god i hope this helps you to understand the interaction between the body, spirit, and soul, which is so important in the work of Jev pointed us in the direction of.